out. Okay. It is 7.01 Eastern. Menazvate Ihor Mechadshishin. Ya budovash veduchi neni vachir. Dobri vachir. Bon nuit. Good evening to everybody who's joining us. <clears throat> Today we have our friends from Canada Revenue Agency that are back to give you more uh, good information on the, on the Canada Child Benefit and other things. Uh, so we have Jamie and Aaron with us tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meduja radi što naši druzi vid Canada Review and Shades nam je zaraz budu imati prezentaciju. Dla tih što sluhaju i hoću čuti rešta prezentaciju po ukrajinske, možno natestujte vnez vašo ekranu i tam da je hlobus da peše interpretation, natestujte na ukrajinsku i naša podroga Ivana prekladate je na ukrajinsku mluvu. So I was just saying that anybody who wants to listen in Ukrainian to the rest of the presentation, which will be presented in English, can click on the interpretation button at the bottom of their screen to select a language, Ukrainian or English. If you have questions, uh, you can use the Q&A function, which you should be able to see also at the bottom of your screen. Vi možete napisati pitanja po ukrajinske či po anglijske. I mi strajem se vidpovisti na ti, kateri možemo. Jakšo vaša situacija je duže osobista, to porada je, še bi podzvonite, potelefonovate do CRA i pohovorite z njima pro vašu situaciju. Before we get started, I wanted to also say that the UCC has announced our spring series of webinars. So I will put the link into the chat. There are six, or sorry, seven, uh, great topics that we've got coming up from April, May, and June, including uh, with uh, Service Canada, including uh, some <clears throat> HR experts, and a lot of other interesting things. So the link is there, uh, and you can look at that and register for those which you find interesting. As well, all of our recordings, Sinashi videos, Zmenulich, Yen, Web Studentis. So you can check out our website for all of the previous uh, recorded webinars as well. So uh, with that, I see we've got uh, about 40 people that have logged on thus far and more are coming on. So Aaron and Jamie, I will uh, turn it over to you. Dobri vacher, vita emo, which means welcome and uh, on with your presentation. Thank you so much. So hello and welcome. My name is Erin and I work at the Canada Revenue Agency as a senior CVITP and benefits outreach officer. Joining me today is my colleague Jamie and he will be monitoring the chat and answering any questions that are received. Today we will be talking to you about the Canada Child Benefit, also known as the CCB, how to apply for the CCB, the Child Disability Benefit, and how to get your benefit payments on time. And before we get started, I would like to note that the information contained in this presentation <clears throat> is current as of today's date, March 27th, 2024, and is subject to change. If there is any discrepancy between the information provided within this presentation and the information found on Canada.ca, the website should be considered the most accurate and up-to-date information. And please note that I will be referring to the Canada Revenue Agency as the CRA for the rest of the presentation. First, we will talk about your income, as the information is required to receive benefits and credits from the CRA. This includes income from all sources and is sometimes referred to as world income. Income from all sources is income that comes from both outside and inside Canada, and this can be employment or pension income, social assistance and workers' compensation benefits, or even investment income. The reason that we ask you for this income that you earned before you became a resident of Canada is to help us calculate how much you would be eligible to receive in benefit and credit payments for which you qualify. You will not be taxed on the income earned from another country. When filling out the Canada Child Benefit application, 
you will be asked to enter your income from all sources in Canadian dollars the year that you became a resident of Canada and your income before you became a resident. If your spouse or common law partner is a non-resident of Canada during any part of the year, you must fill out form CTB9, Canada Child Benefit Statement of Income, for each year or part of a year that they are a non-resident of Canada. You can also call 1-800-387-1193 to provide the income information. Oh, sorry, sorry. Some benefit and credit payments that you may be eligible for include the Canada Child Benefit or the CCB, the Goods and Services Tax Harmonized Sales Tax Credit, more commonly known as the GST HST, the Disability Tax Credit, the Child Disability Benefit, and the Canada Dental Benefit. Today we will be focusing on the Canada Child Benefit and we will also go over the Child Disability Benefit, the Canada Dental Benefit, and how to protect yourself against scams. As I mentioned in the previous slide, this presentation will focus on the Canada Child Benefit or the CCB and how you can apply. The CCB is a tax-free monthly payment made to the primary caregiver of a child under 18 to help them with the cost of raising that child. A primary caregiver could be a parent, another family member, or someone else who is responsible for the care and upbringing of the child and the CRA calculates your payments based on the number and age of children in your care and your net family income from your and your spouse or common law partner's tax returns. Applying for the CCB will also register the child for any related federal, provincial, or territorial programs. To be eligible for the CCB, you must meet all of the following conditions. You must have or had applied for a social insurance number for yourself and spouse or common law partner who resides in Canada, if applicable. You must live with the child and the child must be under 18 years of age. <clears throat> you must be primarily responsible for the care and upbringing of the child and you must be a resident of Canada for tax purposes. You or your spouse or common law partner must also be one of the following, a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident, a protected person, a temporary resident who has lived in Canada for the previous 18 months and who has a valid permit in the 19th month, or an individual who is registered or entitled to be registered under the Indian Act. You are considered primarily responsible for the care and upbringing of the child 
if you supervise the child's daily activities and needs, you make sure that the child's medical needs are met, and you arrange for child care when necessary. A primary caregiver can be the child's mother, father, grandparent, or other family member, and you are not considered the person who is primarily responsible if the child is legally, physically, or financially maintained by a child welfare agency. If this is the case, the agency may receive the children's special allowance for their care. And please note, if you do not meet the above conditions, or your permit has a remark stating does not confer status or does not confer temporary resident status, your application will only be used to register the children for the GST HST credit and other programs administered by the CRA. You will need to reapply for the CCB once you meet all of the above conditions. The previous slide mentioned that one of the conditions to be eligible for the CCB is that you are a resident of Canada for tax purposes. You become a resident of Canada for income tax purposes when you establish significant ties in Canada. Usually you establish these ties on the date that you arrive in Canada. Significant residential ties to Canada can include a home in Canada, a spouse or common law partner in Canada, and dependents who move to Canada to live with you. Please note that your residency status for tax purposes is different from your immigration status. And if you would like the CRA's opinion about your residency status, you can fill out form NR74, Determination of Residency Status. On the screen are the payment amounts that you may get based on your return. The amount of CCB you get is reduced if your family net income is more than $34,863. You should apply for the CCB as soon as possible after your child is born, after a child starts to live with you, or as soon as you or your spouse or common law partner meet the eligibility conditions. You should apply even if you share custody of a child or a child is living with you for a determined temporary period of time. And if you have previously applied for the CCB and were found not eligible, you will need to reapply once you meet the eligibility conditions. There are three ways to apply for the CCB. You can use the automated benefits application the CRA's My Account, or you can mail in form RC66, Q 
Canada Child Benefit application. Please note that starting November 20th, 2023, all individuals will be required to provide proof of birth when applying for the Canada Child Benefit. Families who are already receiving the CCB for their children will not be impacted by this change. You should only apply once. Reapplying using a different method may cause a delay in getting your payments. You do not have to reapply every year, but you and your spouse or common law partner must do your taxes every year. If you have another child after you've applied, you will need to apply for that child and any subsequent children. And if you are eligible for the CCB for prior years and had not previously applied, you can request a retroactive payment for a period of up to 10 years. Newcomers to Canada can apply for the CCB by filling out two forms and mailing them to the CRA. You can easily find these forms at Canada.ca. And the first form is the Canada Child Benefits Application, RC66. You only have to apply once to get the CCB for a child. And again, if you have another child in the future, you'll have to send another application for them. The second form is the Status in Canada and Income Information for the Canada Child Benefits Application, Schedule RC66SCH. And on the RC66SCH, you will have to include information about your and your spouse or common law partner's residency and citizenship, as well as immigration statuses. You'll also need to provide your income from all sources, including income not reported on a Canadian tax return, even if it's zero. You may have to include information for up to two years, depending on the date that you became a resident of Canada. And next, we will go over these forms in a bit more detail. As mentioned in the previous slide, you can apply for the CCB by filling out the form RC66, Canada Child Benefits Application. You must provide proof of birth with your application, and this documentation should in indicate the child's family name, their given name, and their date of birth. Acceptable documents include a photocopy of any of the following documents that indicate the child's family name, given name, and date of birth, which include a birth certificate, a certified copy of a birth registration, a hospital record of birth, or the record of the attending physician, nurse, or midwife at birth, an Indian status card, or a passport. Acceptable documents issued by Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada include a Canadian citizenship certificate, a permanent resident card, Confirmation of permanent residence, a notice of decision issued by the Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada, a temporary resident permit. If you're a newcomer, you may also have to fill out an attached form RC66SCH, Status in Canada and Income Information for the Canada Child Benefit Application. And more information on this form is available on the next slide. And when you complete that, you need to mail both forms to the CRA at the address listed on the form. And it's important to note that even if you send Form RC66 to the CRA, you will still have to do your taxes to receive benefit payments. The CRA does calculate your benefits based on the information that you enter on your tax return.
If you're applying for the CCB as a newcomer or a Canadian returning to Canada after living abroad, you may have to complete Form RC66SCH in addition to the RC66 application. You and your spouse or common law partner must fill out Part A of Form RC66SCH and attach it to Form RC66 if one of the following situations apply to either of you. You become a Canadian citizen in the last 12 months. You became a new resident or returned as a resident of Canada in the last two years. You are a permanent resident. You are a protected person or a refugee. You are not a Canadian citizen and are an Indian within the meaning of the Indian Act. You are a temporary resident who has lived in Canada for the previous 18 months. If you are a temporary resident, you must ensure that your temporary resident permit is valid on the 19th month in order to receive any benefits and credits that you may be eligible for. If your permit is close to its expiry date and you receive a new permit with a new expiry date, you must let the CRA know as soon as possible by submitting a copy online through my account or by mail. Otherwise, your benefits may be interrupted. The RC66SCH captures your spouse or common law partner's income information if they were a non-resident of Canada during any part of the year. If your spouse or common law partner is still a non-resident of Canada for future years, you will need to complete the form and send in CTB9 Income of Non-Resident Spouse or Common Law Partner for the Canada Child Benefit for each year or part of a year that they are a non-resident of Canada. What you need to fill out on the form and attach to your application depends on your status. The different statuses are defined in the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. If your child was born in Canada, after giving birth, you will have the opportunity to fill out the Automated Benefits Application, or the ABA for short. The ABA is a service offered in all provinces, the Northwest Territories, and the Yukon. The Territory of Nunavut will be offering the service in the near future. After you give birth, you will be able to complete your newborn's provincial and territorial birth registration. And with your consent, the information on your child's birth registration will be shared securely with the CRA. The CRA will use this information and other information from your return from last year to determine if you are eligible for the CCB and to calculate your payments. And please note that if you do not give your consent, the information on the birth registration form will not be sent to the CRA. You will have to apply separately for child and family benefits by either using the Apply for Child Benefit option in my account or by completing the Form RC66 Canada Child Benefit application. If you do not provide your SIN, it may result in a delay in processing your application or issuing payments. The CRA may contact you if more information is needed. And if you do not have a social insurance number, you can apply for one through Employment and Social Development Canada in person or by mail. If you have already filed a Canadian tax return and have registered for CRA's My Account, another way that you can apply for the CCB 
is online using the CRA's My Account. My Account is a secure portal that lets you view your personal income tax and benefit information and manage individual tax affairs online on your own. You can track your refund, view or change your return, check your benefit and credit payments and statements, manage direct deposit, change your personal information, view any uncashed checks, view your CRA mail online, such as your notice of assessment, and much more. If you are not already registered, you will have to do so by going to canada.ca slash my dash CRA dash account. Once you're registered, you would log into my account. You would go to apply for child benefits, and then you would confirm your contact information, your marital status, and your citizenship. And then you would add your child's name, their gender, their date and place of birth, and caregiver information. You will be prompted to attach all required documents, such as proof of birth and the RC66SCH form. After you apply, you can also check the status of your application in My Account. Do you share custody of your child? The CRA considers that a child is in shared custody situation when the child lives part of the time with you and part of the time with another individual at different addresses at least 40% of the time or on an approximately equal basis. When the child lives with them, both people must be the primarily responsible person for the child's care and upbringing. Each eligible person will get half of the payment that they would have received if the child lived with them full time. If your child lives with you and the other parent in the same home, you are not considered to be in a shared custody situation. And for more information on the Canada Child Benefit, you can go to canada.ca slash Canada dash child dash benefit. So next we'll talk about the child disability benefit, which is paid monthly to the person who receives the Canada child benefit for that child. A valid disability tax credit certificate is required to receive the child disability benefit. The child disability benefit is for families who care for a child under the age of 18 who is eligible for the CCB and the DTC. It is a tax-free payment of up to $3,173 annually. If you are already receiving the CCB for a child in your care who is eligible for the DTC, you do not need to apply for the child disability benefit. It will be automatically included with your CCB payments. If the child is determined to be eligible for the previous years, the child disability benefit will automatically be issued for up to two previous CCB benefit years. And for years before that, you will have to send a written statement to the attention of the CCB entitlement team at the tax center that services your area. And for more information on the child disability benefit, you can visit the website on the screen. For the period of July 2023 to June 2024, you may get up to $3,173 per year, which is $264.41 per month for each child who is eligible for the disability tax credit. The CDB is calculated based on the number of children for whom you receive the CCB.
So next, we'll talk about the Canada Dental Benefit, which provides financial support for families who have an adjusted family net income of less than $90,000 and have out-of-pocket dental care expenses for children under 12. Depending on your net income, your non-taxable Canada Dental Benefit payments could be as high as $650 per child per benefit period. If you are a parent or guardian of eligible children under 12, you will have to attest that your child does not have access to private dental insurance and your child's dental costs are not fully covered by another dental program provided by any level of government. In order to apply, please remember that you need to be receiving the Canada Child Benefit for the child. Your taxes must be up to date and you must keep your receipts or records from your dental appointments for six years. The current benefit period covers dental care services for your child um, between July 1st, 2023 and June 30th, 2024. You have until June 30th, 2024 to apply for this period. The quickest, easiest and most secure way to apply for the Canada Dental Benefit is through my account. If you apply online and are signed up for direct deposit, you could receive your payment within five business days. If you are unable to apply online or you prefer to call us, you can apply by calling 1-800-715-8836 or you can visit canada.ca slash dental and access more information on the Canada Dental Benefit. To find out what benefits you may be eligible for, you can use the Benefit Finder online, and by answering a few questions, the Benefits Finder will customize a list of benefits for which you may be eligible. You can go to the first web address on your screen to access that, and if you want to get an estimate of the payment amounts that you could get, please visit the second web address on your screen. The CRA calculator tool calculates any federal and provincial or territorial payments that you might be eligible for. So the key to receiving your benefits and credits is doing your taxes on time, and we know it can be a bit scary for some, but it's very important. Filing your taxes is the only way to get the many benefits and credits that are calculated based on your income. Even if you didn't earn any income in the year or your income was tax exempt, we still need this information. And the deadline to do your taxes is generally April 30th every year. Filing by then allows us to calculate your payments and send them to you on time. There are a few different ways to do your taxes. You can do your taxes online, which is the fastest way as tax returns filed electronically are typically processed within two weeks. For more information, please visit canada.ca slash natfile. Certified software is available to make online filing easy and some products are even free. The tax software guides you and calculates everything for you, and it helps make sure that you don't miss out on any benefits and credits. 
Please note that if the CRA does not have your complete date of birth on record, you may not be able to do your taxes online. And the next option is that volunteers may be able to help you do your taxes for free. There are tax clinics hosted by community organizations across Canada for those with a modest income and a simple tax situation. You can also get help from a family member, a friend, or a tax preparer or you can download a tax package, fill out the paper forms, and then mail them to the CRA. You must use the package for the province in which you lived on December 31st. Filing a tax return by paper can take 10 to 12 weeks to process. To get a package, you can visit canada.ca slash taxes dash general dash package, or you can call the CRA at 1-855-330 As I just mentioned, you may be able to get your taxes done by a volunteer for free. The CRA works with community organizations and their volunteers to help eligible individuals file their taxes for free. The program is called the Community Volunteer Income Tax Program, and in Quebec, it's also known as the Income Tax Assistance Volunteer Program. If you're eligible, you should have a modest income and a simple tax situation. Generally, a modest income is less than $35,000 for a single person and less than $45,000 for a couple. And your tax situation is simple if you do not have a small business or income from a rental property. Tax clinics are held all year. However, most clinics are offered in March and April. And for more information or to find a clinic near you, please visit the web address on the screen. So now I will give an overview of what to expect if the CRA contacts you, along with some tips to help you be scam smart by understanding and recognizing the different types of scams. You should always be careful when you get a telephone call, a text message, an email or mail from someone claiming to be from the CRA. This is especially true if it asks for personal information, such as the number on your credit card, your bank account, or your passport. These messages may insist that personal information is needed so that you can receive a refund or a benefit payment. They can also threaten legal consequences to scare you into paying a debt to the CRA that does not actually exist. There are also other communications that may urge taxpayers to visit a fake CRA website where you are asked to verify your identity by entering personal information. These are all scams and you should never respond to these fraudulent communications or click on any of the links provided. It's important to be vigilant when it comes to scammers. The CRA can contact you by telephone 
and here are some situations where the CRA may call you. If you owe tax or money to a government program, a collections officer may call you to discuss your file and ask you to make a payment. In this case, you may need to provide some information about your household financial situation. A CRA agent may also call you if the CRA has questions about the tax and benefit records or documents that you submitted. A CRA officer may call you for more information. And when the CRA calls you, they may verify your identity by asking for personal information, such as your full name, your date of birth, your address, or social insurance number. Please remember that the CRA will not demand immediate payments with gift cards, prepaid credit cards, or Bitcoin, and the CRA won't say that the police are coming or threaten you with a prison sentence or deportation. You may think that you received a text message or an email from the CRA, but did you really? There may be times when the CRA will notify you by email when a new message or a document, such as a notice of assessment, is available for you to view in secure CRA portals, such as my account. Or you may have sub subscribed to receive an email notification about an upcoming benefit payment. Please note that we will never ask you to provide personal information in return by email. However, the CRA may email you a link to a CRA webpage, form, or publication that you asked for during a telephone call. Also, the CRA will not use instant messaging, such as Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, to communicate with you about tax-related issues under any circumstance. If you receive a text or an instant message claiming to be from the CRA, beware because it is a scam. When in doubt, ask yourself why the CRA would need your personal information. Do I have a balance owing? Am I expecting more money from the CRA? Check and see if you have mail or an amount owing in my account, and if you are unsure, contact the CRA. You should never click a link unless you're sure it's from the CRA, and when you are in doubt, you should delete. Visit canada.ca slash b-scam-smart to learn more. You can report a scam to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre at the web address or the phone number on your screen. And if you suspect that you may be a victim of fraud, you should contact your local police station. While we are wrapping up this information session, I would like to invite you to fill out our short feedback form and provide any comments that you wish to share with us. Your feedback will allow us to imp improve our future sessions and our products, and you can access the form by scanning the QR code or by typing in the web address on the screen. The activity number of today's event is 87528. 
please make sure that you don't put any personal information like your name, your SIN, your phone number, or email address in your comments. And we do appreciate you taking the time to provide your feedback. And this is the end of our webinar. So thank you so much for joining us today. And if there are any questions, we will be able to answer them now. Well, thank you, Aaron, for that great presentation. Uh, my apologies, my phone blasted. I think at some point <laughs> I was trying to do too many things at once, but uh, thank you for, for your patience. Um, and I know that there's been a number of questions uh, that people have been writing into the Q&A that your colleague Jamie has been answering. So I don't think there's any, very many unanswered questions, but there is one uh, right there that's half Ukrainian half in English so maybe I'll, I'll go to that one uh, and just remind anybody who wants to uh, ask a question uh, to write it in the Q&A so we can see it and Aaron and Jamie can can review it so the question is if uh, the husband uh, of this of, of the partnership has arrived earlier than the wife and children how was the time spent in Canada counted so they were referring to the 18 months calculation uh, on the child benefit. Jamie, do you have an answer for that? Yeah, I, I can, and I was actually typing it, but I wasn't oh, okay, typing it fast enough. Okay. So in this case, the, the first parent to reach the 18 month threshold would then apply for the Canada Child Benefit. We don't need to wait until both parents uh, meet that threshold, but, but when the first one will reach the 18 months, that's when they should apply uh, immediately. Okay. Uh, and um, so I'll just say we answer that one live. Uh, okay, there's a question from Alexander. How old does a child have to be to apply for a social insurance number? I used to know that. Is it 16, 15? What's the answer for that? <clears throat> the child could, or the parent could apply for a social insurance number for the child really uh, soon after birth, uh, oftentimes there's not a really, uh, there's not anything driving the need to apply for it right away. But if, if someone were to sign up for something like the Canada Learning Bond to receive free money towards the child's education, they do require a social insurance number for that. And in order to apply for a social insurance number, they do first have to have a, a birth certificate. So okay. the birth certificate would always be the first step. And then the social insurance number, they won't need it likely until, um, you know, the parent, like I said, could be could be trying to get Canada Learning Bond or something mm. for the child. Sooner, the, you know, the sooner the better, but there's not a rush right away to do that. Okay. The child certainly would need one before they start to work as a, as a teenager. Though. Yeah, yeah. I just remember that in high school, a million years ago, we sort of had that instruction on how to, how to first apply to get a social insurance number before you get your first summer job, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the, ch in the chat there, but uh, maybe Aaron or Jamie, I know you've been doing some information sessions with Ukrainian communities in Atlantic Canada. Are there any um, anything that hasn't come up today that's sort of the most commonly asked question or common myth or something that you, that you wanted to clarify for people? Um, the, mo oh. okay. <laughs> the, the most common one is the, if one parent is here for the 18 months and the other isn't, who, who can apply? Can they apply? That is a common question we get. So I'm glad that one was asked. Um, Jamie, do you have any other ones? Well, I'm just you? I'm just thinking of the the GSTHST credit is something that they can yes. apply for as soon as they arrive in Canada. And for some people, uh, you know, getting there may be some confusion between the GSTHST credit and the Canada Child Benefits application. So Canada Child Benefit, obviously, they must wait until the 18 months uh, is up. But for for the GSTHST credit and the associated provincial. Uh, 
climate, uh, Canada climate rebate, but they all have different provincial amounts. Those you can apply for uh, when you apply for the GST HST credit. Okay. So right away. Yeah. There is. And, uh, oh, go ahead, Aaron. I will add to that. You you do need to fill out um, something for the Canada Child Benefit if you have a child and you're applying for the GST HST. So if an individual has a child, has not met the 18 months, but is eligible for GST, they would be filling out bo both forms um, and they would be denied the CCB, but then receive the GST HST. And we have a lot of people who don't realize they need to apply for the CCB again once they meet the eligibility. So if that's the case for anybody, once they meet the 18 months, they should be applying again for the CCB. Okay. So there's a que there's two questions that have popped up, just I think sort of clarification points. Uh, do children need to have a SIN number to receive the child benefit? No, no, they don't. And when the parent will, would file the taxes for the child, we do look for the birth date, the name and the birth date is really important. The social insurance number is not required. Okay. And then this last one in Ukrainian is it's a reference to the calculation. So the question is if uh, somebody has in calculating the 18 months, if they've had to leave Canada for, for any number of days, uh, how does that enter into the calculation of, of the 18 months? For example, if they had to leave for 30 days or 60 days. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I think it would depend on what you were leaving for. Okay. Um, I believe, but um, it's always important for us to know, obviously, when or if someone has had to leave the country and that you're coming back. Uh, I'm not sure, though, that it, that, that impacts on the 18 months. Okay. Uh, so I, I would probably defer that to the benefit inquiries line. Okay. Yeah, they could give a call and ask, and they would be able to let them know. Okay. Um we're getting a bunch of little questions now. Uh, <laughs> good. It's usually the way. <laughs> keep, keep coming. Uh, Pani Alina is asking, how can I receive a DTC certificate? Okay. So the DTC certificate is, it's, uh, that is the application form or when you complete the application form and it is approved, it's called or what we consider to be a valid disability tax credit certificate. It really is just a piece of paper indicating that you're approved. But you would send in a, an application form indicating that you have a severe and prolonged impairment in physical or mental functions. And that would be something that you fill out a portion of it yourself and you would have your doctor, your nurse practitioner, or uh, one of the specialists that would deal with your disability. They're gonna complete the information you know, indicating your disability and how it impacts on your day-to-day -day life. So that is an application that it's completed and it's, uh, when you send it in, it can take, you know, eight weeks before you'll get an answer on that. And just so that everyone's aware, we, CRA doesn't charge a fee for that to process that, but some physicians, uh, nurse practitioners do charge a fee to fill out that application. So um, the next year when you, when you file your taxes and you claim medical expenses, you could claim that amount. Sometimes it's a small amount. It could be $25, $50. It's usually about $100. So just to give everyone uh, a, a kind of a heads up that that is a possibility and CRA doesn't have any control over that amount. Okay. So uh, again, we want to encourage everybody to do the feedback. So we are leaving this slide up for everybody who's watching or who will watch later on. Uh, Aaron and Jamie, I want to say uh, thank you or diakuyu as we say in Ukrainian to both of you and your team for preparing these webinars and and answering all these important questions for people and we hope to stay in touch and uh and uh as as new information comes forward we hope that you'll be here to present it with us certainly of course okay Yaku ivana thank you ivana for the translation uh i again will share the uh, screen from uh our uh, upcoming webinars uh or sorry the link uh which is in the chat we encourage you to register to uh, take a look at the programs and uh, we are going to be doing webinars all the way through to the end of June. So here is our uh, upcoming programs. So we have tonight, we're, we're talking about Prince Edward Island, we're talking about consumer protection, uh, Canada pension, old age security, 
uh, Service Canada and uh, cultural challenges and job hunting and credit history and starting your business. So lots of exciting different uh, uh, topics coming up on our website where you can register and see more. So again, thank you, Jamie and Aaron, Daku Ivana, and uh, we'll see everybody soon again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.